The University of York has a gender pay gap of 19.31%, according to a recently released report. We'll ask what the university intends to do to remove the gap. After the controversy of action in Syria, we speak to Rachel Maskell MP and politics editor Neve Carroll about the political implications this could have for the Prime Minister. And finally, we follow sport editor Che Quinn as he tries yoga. Hello and welcome to News TV. I'm Maddie Eddy. The University of York say they were founded on principles of equality and opportunity for all. However, their recent report, released under new statutory gender pay rules, has revealed a gender pay gap of 19.31% among staff, alongside an upper pay quartile dominated by 62% men. News editor Imogen Bellamy has this report. Last year, the BBC revealed a gender pay gap of 9.3%, leading to a row over sexism in the corporation. While this was controversial, it's lower than the UK average of 18%. Organisations needed to release their gender pay gap figures by midnight on April 4th, with the university releasing theirs ahead of the deadline in March. These revealed a discrepancy of 19.31%. The report revealed a 47-53% to male to female split of the university's staff, with the mean gender pay gap putting men at 19.31% higher in regard to hourly rates of pay. The uppermost pay quartile contained a 62-38% to male to female split, in comparison to 37% to 63% in the lowest quartile. The university declined to make anyone available for interview, but they did provide news with this statement. Addressing the gender pay gap is a high priority for our senior leadership team. The issue is a national one and we are committed to understanding more about the factors that impact on career progression and pay for both men and women. Yuzu's women's officers had this to say. Women are just not being promoted as much. When they are being promoted, they're not being paid for what they are worth. The university say they are determined to tackle this issue by addressing barriers to the promotion and recruitment of all women. They also plan to continue good practice currently in place, such as the Athena Swan Initiative. Imogen Bellamy, News TV. And Imogen joins me in the studio now. So why do you think this gap is so large? Well, the gap is large because women aren't being hired at the same rate, they aren't being promoted at the same rate, and they aren't being promoted as far due to reasons such as going on maternity leave and taking breaks from work. So why is the gender bonus gap a huge 73.97%? Well, the 73.97% figure comes from a mean uh, bonus gap. The median is actually 4.38. Uh, it's due to NHS um, bonuses, which aren't awarded by the university themselves, but by the NHS Trust. So these five bonuses have gone and they're very high in value. And how does this compare with the 2016's gender pay gap? The 2016 gender pay gap was actually worse by um, just over 1%. So they have been improving, they are continuing to improve and they have much in store. All right, well, thank you very much, Imogen. On to politics now, and it's been a fortnight since the UK, alongside allies France and the United States, bombed several Syrian government weapon sites in retaliation to a supposed chemical attack by the Syrian government on its citizens on April 7th. The Prime Minister did not consult the Commons before deciding to take action, which Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn condemned as a flagrant disregard of Parliament. Deputy Editor Oscar Bentley went to ask Rachel Maskell MP on her opinion of the action. What would be your opinion of the Prime Minister's decision to take action in Syria? Well, clearly the Prime Minister had time to recall Parliament. She could have done that on the Friday and didn't. And I think that certainly usurps our democracy, but also it meant that she made a very important decision without any accountability to Parliament. And it really does undermine Parliament. So um, I think she was wrong to do so. We were ready to return to Parliament to help take this important decision. So I have serious concerns. I'm now joined by politics editor Neve Carroll. What ramifications could Theresa May choosing to forgo Parliament have politically for her? Well, Theresa May's critics have labelled her as weak for choosing to forgo Parliament. Labour and the SNP have called into question both the legality and the morality of the strikes. Um, 
Military intervention is in general very unpopular with the British public, especially in the post iraq climate. So any attempt to intervene further in Syria could be very damaging for the PM. And do you think she chose to forego Parliament because she didn't think she could get the votes to um, agree the action? Well, certainly David Cameron's defeat in the Commons in 2013 over military intervention in Syria will have been bearing heavy on her mind. She doesn't want a repeat of that. However, she cites military t reasons, um, such as the timing of the attacks being crucial and not wanting to give away the tactics to the enemy for choosing to forego Parliament. And quickly, do you think that Jeremy Corbyn's call for War Powers Act will get any traction? Certainly military action is unpopular among the British public, so it may gain traction. However, the political momentum has moved on since the Syrian strikes. All right, well, thank you very much, Neve. And finally, on to sport and for the latest news tries. We sent sport editor Che Quinn to practice a bit of yoga. Hello. On this edition of News Tries, I try out some yoga and meet YogaSoft president Saren Hughes. Let's go. How did you get into yoga? I uh, used to be a figure skater and a gymnast. Got a few injuries and basically just knew that I couldn't come to university and continue to do either sports. So I decided to do yoga. What would you say to someone considering yoga as a sport they could do at York? Do it. Absolutely do it. So, will I master yoga? Back to the studio to find out. I'm joined by Yoga Swap President Saren Hughes, who's going to take me through some moves now. Right, we're going to start with a sun salutation. So breathe in, put your arms up. And down. Why do you think yoga is a beneficial activity for students? Um, put your legs back and come into a pressure position. Um, I think so. It's a great activity because it's good for flexibility, for relaxation, and it's also a good workout. Come over into downward dog. Do you have to be flexible to do yoga? step forward. Um, I'd say you don't have to, but it helps. Um, anyone can do yoga, but you don't necessarily have to be flexible to be able to succeed. What would you say to a student who wants to do an activity but doesn't think yoga is right for them? Why not try it out? That's always the answer. Right, we'll do another pose. Okay. Um, so please step, put your back, le back leg back and we're going to put this one forward. And look at, look at your Nothica. School Warrior One. It's all about concentration. Thanks, Saren. Back to you, Maddie. Thanks, Che. That's all for News TV. Don't forget to check out news.co.uk for the latest content. And be sure to check out the next edition of News, which will be available around campus in week four. Goodbye. <laughs>